So just list your Bibles and say with me now, Father God in heaven, let your word fill my mind. Let your word be in my heart. And let your word be on my lips. And let your grace show in my life. Amen and amen. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 62 and we're reading from verses 1 to 5. This says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest. Well, Zion is another name for Jerusalem. It was the, the holy city, Zion. And obviously the play on words quite often, the Hebrew poetry, that the, the Hebrew poetry tends to repeat things, as I've said before, um, sometimes in triplets and it's saying the same thing but in different ways. Until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. So there was this attitude that she was the mother uh, of, of our worship in the sense that that was the, the mother place of worship. That was, the, that was the place where all the Jewish people went to, to the temple in Jerusalem. And so therefore there is this understanding that we need to speak the truth because this is the center of holiness for the Jewish people this is where we we meet with God and that was the attitude here of Isaiah and it says in verse 2 the Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name and this is important to understand that that God talks to you and calls you by a new name. We often find this in the scriptures where someone is, is given a name and you know it may not be the name that God wants for them. It may not be the name that really describes who they are. And so we've, we've had Jacob being called Israel. We've got Saul, the apostle that became Paul, the apostle. Saul, the one who was coming against Christians as, as a Pharisee, um, as a young, a young uh, shall we say, intern who was going to take over from the chief priest at some point. He was destined to be there and he became Paul. And so, you know, Simon became Peter and, and there is a sense in which God calls you by a different name. And he calls his people by a different name too. But what name has he called you? What name does, has the world given you? And we often talk about life scripts and things like that, that your parents have given you a life script by giving you a certain way of being. They have um, spoken over your life that you are this or you are that. And then we have to find out what God says about us, which is completely different. So we'll find a new life script for our life. The old life script is always there trying to sabotage us, but we gain a new life script and we find what God wants for us for our life, this can make a big difference in our lives as, as to how we proceed. Because this has been prophetically spoken over our lives and it kind of determines our future to a certain degree. It's prophetic words, words are very powerful and they get into our brain, they get into our mind as to who we are and quite often this takes us to a different place. We, we are not what others say we are, we are what God calls us to be. And so when we become believers and we understand some of the th workings of the mind, we can understand here how God has something different for us. God, God decides who we are. He decides where we're going to live. He decides where we're going to work. He has a plan and purpose for our lives. And unfortunately in the world people don't understand that. They just don't get it. They, they don't have any real connection with God. They don't understand God. And they may be connected in a religious way with religious movements and religious faiths, but perhaps not knowing the living God. And so they don't understand the deeper things of God. They don't really connect with the fact that we, we're called by name, that God knows us intimately. He knows every hair on our head. He knows us completely. And so we have to be aware that God has called us for a purpose. And, and this purpose, he's calling Israel. He said in verse 3, You shall also be a crown of glory 
in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. So this is, this is his work. This is his authority. This is his stamp of authority over the earth that he's called this people by name, that he knows them intimately, that he calls them to himself. It says in verse 4, you shall no longer be termed forsaken, lost. And has God spoken to you into your life? Because in the world, you began to realize over time that it didn't matter what you did, it didn't matter what you tried to do outside of God, everything was meaningless, everything was, was a waste of time, it seems. And God has a purpose. But all the time you are trying to gain your own purpose and following your own gender, what happens is you're frustrated and things don't necessarily work out. And when you get to the end of yourself, there's nothing left. And so this is why many people, when they get to a very low point in addiction, or they, they suddenly realize that they can't make their lives work. And that's when they get to the end of themselves and they're often very, very available then to find out what God might want of them. And they talk about a higher being and we talk about God Almighty. And, and so we have to understand this is where people get to and they are lost. People are lost, basically, until they get to know God. It says, nor shall your land any more be termed desolate. And this is what happens in life when you don't know God, when you, when you don't get to know the God who created you and you think you know everything and you're going to run your life a certain way, then what happens is you are frustrated. And all the things that you turn your hand to that you think are good seem to turn to rats. Everything seems to go wrong in life. You may have nice places and nice situations and nice times that you have where you've strived very hard to be happy and make things work but because God's not in it because God is not the prime source of, of what's happening because you haven't given the glory to God and you're glorifying in yourself and thinking that you've made it and you're okay and you're happy quite often things just crumble and life goes a different way and you may have felt that you were sitting pretty and everything was working fine, but then you suddenly realize that it's not what you thought. And it doesn't necessarily make you happy because it's what you think is going to make you happy, but God knows you intimately. God knows your heart to the point he knows what will make you happy. He knows what will satisfy you. And so when we think I'm going to be bored with God's work. I'm going to be bored doing God's service. We have to come back to God and, and, and ask God to show us what he wants and really be prepared to submit to him and to come with a humble heart and say, I don't know what's right for me. I think I know, but I need you to show me what's right for me and I need you to show me what real life is, what your life is. And then he shows us, he gives us direction, he, he will actually help us and he will satisfy the desires of our heart. Unfortunately, we think the desires of our heart often is something else because we get brainwashed by this world and our pleasures sometimes um, cause us to think that what we like is good for us. There's many foods that I like and I'm often told by by my nutritionist <laughs> that I, I it doesn't matter that I like them I can't eat them and I don't like it now I don't know about you but we, we, we want to, to do what we want to do we want to we want to have the pleasures that we like in life and we we begin to think well what there shouldn't be there's no harm in that but when we know things are harming us when we have our our eyes of our understanding enlightened and we start to see that there are things wrong with what we eat and the amount of sugar and salt that is put into foods, especially processed foods. We begin to become a little bit more savvy and understand a little bit more. But, you know, these things are designed to taste good. This is the devil's temptations all the time. 
He wants to destroy us. And so any way that he can bring that through any kind of corruption, any, anything really, that will aim at our pleasures, this is going to be something he's going to play on. And that can be in all areas of your life. It can be in relationships, it can be in finances, things, your lifestyle. You think you're doing what's right because you like it. And we have a world today which is awful in the sense that, you know, people are, they're, they're not honest and, and reliable, they're not responsible anymore. If it feels good, do it, and if it doesn't feel good, if it feels a bit uncomfortable, don't bother. When sometimes we have to face up to responsibilities and do things that are uncomfortable. Sometimes we have to do things that feel uncomfortable, even when we're serving God. But we do them because we love God. And at the end of it, God brings us through and shows us a different way of living. And so this is something really important. He calls you by name. He, he wants you to, to blossom. He wants you to, to be blessed. And it says, for the Lord delights in you. So he gives you a name, Hephzibah. And Hephzibah basically means my delight is in her. Hephzibah. Imagine that God will call the Jewish people, my delight is in her. And your land, Beulah, which basically means your land is married. In other words, God is your bridegroom. Jesus becomes our bridegroom. We are the bride, remember. And so what we do, whatever we turn our hand to, that's why the Jewish nation is blessed beyond anything in terms of financial things and projects and so on. They are very clever people. They're blessed by God. And so, quite often they have a lot of jealousy against them because they're very good at making money, for example. You, you don't need to explain to a Jew how to be in business and how to make money. It, it becomes... It's part of them. It's a blessing as well on everything that they touch. They seem to be able to make things out of nothing. And it's incredible. And it's because God has blessed them. Verse 5 says, For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. And so this is where he's saying, you know, this is a complete marriage situation I'm not just some bit of wood or stone I'm a person I'm a personal God and I've made a marriage with you this is something of a covenant the marriage covenant for example it's a covenant I've made an agreement with you I can't break it I can't deny my own promises and myself and so so shall your God rejoice over you this is what God wants to do. He wants to rejoice over each one of us. Are you in the place where God can rejoice over you? Are you being obedient to God? Are you one of the remnant? Are you one of the people that God has chosen? And is he able to rejoice over you? Have you come to terms with the fact that you are a sinner saved by God's grace and now you have become a saint in the kingdom, but you still have to crucify the flesh. You still have to repent when you do things wrong. You still have to ask God forgiveness when you do. You still need to come back to God. It's important because we want God to rejoice over us. We know now that we are his children. We're adopted into his family. We know that. But that doesn't give us free license to just turn the other way and, and not be committed to God and not serve God faithfully and loyally wherever he's put us. This is important. He wants to rejoice over us. He wants to bless us. But we can block that by going our own way. And this is where Isaiah is reminding them that this is their God. That this is the one who has even created them and given them life. He's the one who has called to you by name. This is an almighty God. And he loves you so much, he's even given you a new name. And you have to find out what that new name is for you. So you may have been given a name at birth by your parents, but what is your true name in Christ? They've given you a life script. They've determined who you are by some of your actions and given you a prophecy over who you are. However, what 
as God calls you to be. Where are you in Christ? What do you need to change to get in line with what God is calling you to be? This is what we need to know. We need to make sure we're in the right place, doing the right thing, in the right way, for the God who's called us. And then we will be happy. Then we will be satisfied. So let's just turn to the New Testament.